Hey, this is Kevin from The Interrupters, and you are watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to my interview with Kevin from The Interrupters. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, no problem. So you are now on this co-headline tour with Swimmers. We have the regrets here as well, and we are here in Toronto. So excited for the show. How have things been going down? Um, they've been going great. You know, we did the West Coast with Swimmers um, about a month ago. Took a couple week break, and we went to South America with Green Day. And, and then now we're on the East Coast, so it's funny, it's like rejoining a tour that we had already been a part of, but having the regrets out here totally like, it was like a breath of new life into the tour and they're super awesome, so. And also it's cold now. Oh, on the <laughs> last leg of the tour, it was all West Coast and it was, yeah. it was October, so it was still warm. And now we're like, wow, it's a cold. A nice big shock coming through to Canada. Yeah, no, but, but uh, the shows, I mean, this is the third show of this leg and they've just been awesome and uh yeah we're really looking forward to our two canadian dates too so i absolutely love how you encourage fans to dance at your shows i mean it's completely danceable music so it makes sense so has everybody been living up to the expectations oh absolutely and you know like it's the only little bit of cardio i get <laughs> ever so i just try to turn the whole thing into one big aerobics class up there okay <laughs> but so yeah what's a go-to move of yours then the running man yeah yeah oh yeah i mean <laughs> It's, you can do it with a guitar on. You can do it with a guitar off. Uh, it was made very famous by like MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice in the late 80s. So and, a versatile uh, move. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> and, it, and it's proven that you know, it, it can stand the test of time. Truly. Mm -hmm. Well, you had mentioned Green Day there. I know how important that was to you guys. As you had shared with fans, that is one of the greatest accomplishments and best times that you've ever had while on the road. So oh, yeah. What made it so special? Well, you know, we had the opportunity to actually go out to, to Europe to England and to Australia with them already this year. And um, the last run we did was in South America. And, um, you know, just be, we'd, it was places we'd never been. So we'd been to Europe before, we'd been to Australia before. We'd never done it at that level. That was amazing to go out there with Green Day and to play in arenas for the first time. It was just, it was a whole new world for us. But going down to South America, it was our first time down there ever. And to be down there with them, and, and the level of shows they play and, you know, and after getting to know them and becoming like friends with them, it was just, we were on cloud nine the entire time. It was like the most, uh, I, we like every night after the show, we'd get in the van to go back to the hotel or to the airport or wherever. And we would just be like, can you believe this is <laughs> happening? Just be on a high the this whole is time. amazing. I'm like, uh, and like, we were so grateful the whole time that like, we just, we had these dumb smiles on our face and it was just amazing. And yeah, uh, we will cherish those memories like forever. I love hearing about that. Yeah. You mentioned that how there were a lot of firsts on that tour, especially in South America. So mm -hmm. if you could still play anywhere though that you have yet to, where would you love to? What's still one of those firsts you'd like to check off? We've never been to Asia. We've never been to Japan, okay. China, uh, Philippines, uh, Indonesia. We'd like to go everywhere. Yeah. So that's still on our list of awesome. places we definitely want to go. Yeah. Well, I noticed that you have some really cool merch, especially on this tour. I love the mm -hmm. new Raglan tees that you have. Thank you. Those look great. Yeah. Uh, when you think back to shows that you went to, though, did you take merch away from them and still, still keep anything? Yeah. You know what's funny is when I started going to shows, uh, not that I'm like huge now, but I was really little when I was like a teenager. So I wore a youth medium. And I remember anytime bands would have the youth sizes, I'd be like, all right. And then finally, <laughs> when I worked my way up to a men's small, I was like, all right. Now all the bands have my size. But yeah, uh, it's funny because I still have a lot of like, I have trouble letting go of certain things. I'm kind of a hoarder. So I have a lot of band shirts from just like growing up, going to shows, even bands that we've toured with now. Like I've got like old Rancid shirts from before I ever met Rancid. So cool. Yeah, so... But yeah, I have a trouble letting go of stuff. My brothers are the same way. We're, we're kind of hoarders and yeah. Is that still ever growing? Like when you're touring with bands now, you do like merch swaps or do you still try yeah. to Yeah, oh, things? totally. And we also try to grab like, you know, we'll grab dressing room signs for shows we did. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bad. We don't even know what to do with them. So we just have a stack of memorabilia at the house. You know what though? In a few years time, you'll be able to reflect on those things. I'm sure you'll be like, I'm glad that I took that shoe. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I'll just bum out my grandkids one day. I'll be like, all right, like, grandpa's getting that box out of the <laughs> attic again. And I'm like, here's the dressing room sign from when we opened for Green Day. <laughs> what yeah. was the first show you ever went to oh the first show i ever went to well it was michael mcdonald and kenny loggins in uh in oakland okay yeah my dad How was it you seem it was awesome it, it's like... just not punk you know if that if you guys were expecting me to say like i saw like black flag at fender's ballroom no it was michael mcdonald and kenny loggins 
It was awesome, though. My dad had uh, a connection with Michael McDonald. They had mutual friends, and he was going up to the concert. I was probably eight years old, and he's like, do you want to come along? And I was like, yeah. And I, it was my first time backstage ever. They had a ping pong table back there. It was pretty cool. cool. Yeah. And as soon as you saw that, it just stuck. Yeah. It's like, I want to be backstage forever. Totally. I can't believe I'm not like a saxophone player after seeing that show. There was so much saxophone happening. <laughs> well, we, of course, have to discuss Say It Out Loud, latest record release. Mm -hmm. I really do love how blunt and straightforward the lyrics on this record are. It's my favorite aspect of it. You really do say it out loud. So do you feel yeah. like a lot of people should just say it out loud, kind of be a bit more direct? Or? I think it's great to be direct as long as you're not being a jerk, it, you know? Like, if, if you got something positive and you want to share your experience I mean that's the thing is uh Amy as a performer is very direct and you know a lot of eye contact and as a lyricist too she's always just trying to get the shortest distance between two points of like that feeling you have inside and how to say it so that's kind of where the title came from too when we were trying to come up with titles it was just like we had no titles and then at one point we're like say it out loud and we're like oh say it out loud it that could, clicks yeah it could be the title so yeah, and, and we're all super proud of it. I mean, we put a lot of love into the writing and recording and, and just and, and touring it, too. We've been touring that record. You know, we've gone all over. So, yeah, we're, we're super proud of it. And we're already in the studio working on our third one right now, too. How are things so. coming along on that? Because that's something that a lot of people want to know. Kind of yeah, they're, it's, it's going great. We got Tim Armstrong, who produced the first two records, and it's on his label, Hellcat. And so it's like we got the team back together. And... Um, we actually put aside some time this time around. Like on our last two records, we did them fairly quickly. This time we're like, all right, in September, we're going to take a couple weeks and we're just going to go in the studio. And, and it's been a lot of fun coming up with new ideas and, and um, we're excited to share them all. When you go into the studio, is one of your rules to have no rules? Because I love how on the last record, you really do cross a bunch of different genres, different nuances. So do you go in there not really with a game plan per se, and you just let it... You know what's funny? You go in with a game plan, and then you abandon the game plan. <laughs> as soon because, as you walk through the door. Exactly. Because sometimes you try to go in with like a certain thing in mind, and if it's not working, you got to follow the creativity. you got to follow the good vibes, too. Because sometimes if you're, if you're too you know, set on doing something a certain way... You're still collaborating, you know? It's, uh, there's, there's five of us in there, so it's all about making sure that whatever keeps the group happy is kind of what we do, and we follow that, and sometimes that's abandoning the playbook, sometimes it's sticking to the playbook, and that's the beautiful thing is, like, we don't really have a plan. So, yeah, it's kind of a no plan plan. You had mentioned trying new things as well, so what are some yeah. of those things you may be dabbling into? I don't know how much you can share. But. Well, just, you know, like, we, we have a pretty good grasp of what we've done on records before as far as, like, what tempos work, what keys work, what styles work, and now we can kind of reach into our bag of tricks, and if nothing from our bag of tricks is feeling good, we can kind of go into new uncharted territory. I feel like with two records under our belt, it's, it's, it's a good time to be able to expand, but also keep the sound that you know, people like and that we like to play. And uh, so yeah, the, I think they'll pro we'll probably broaden the horizons a little on this one while still keeping it in our universe. you know. Well, something here at Ambi is that we not only interview musicians like yourself, but we also mm -hmm. interview wrestlers. So I have to ask, no way. are you a wrestling fan? No, you know, <laughs> I, 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 have, I, <laughs> I have a tremendous respect, my, but, but I can't claim that I'm a wrestling fan mm -hmm. because wrestling fans are so passionate. Yeah. I'd be a poser if I was like, yeah, I'm a wrestling fan. You know, I, my brothers, the twins, they grew up being huge, you know, WWE, and uh, they had all the shirts. They were too big for them like a mankind shirt that went down to their knees. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I'm fascinated by that. It's, it's, I mean, it takes endurance, it takes heart, and it takes, you know, being able to get thrown down on the ground oh, yeah. a few million times, you know? So, um, hi to all the wrestlers that have, that have been here. That's awesome. <laughs> Hello. We've interviewed a lot on this couch, actually. No so, way. Oh, yeah. All right. There you have it. Cool. <laughs> if you were to be a wrestler, what would your gimmick be? Oh, um... I don't know. Probably, uh, I, I'm kind of good at climbing on things, so I would probably do some kind of weird spider monkey, climb up on someone's back, and then try to flip them over. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. If there's a bunk bed, I, I usually get the top bunk. Cause, <laughs> yeah. Because you can just climb right up there, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, as you wrap things up, I do want to bring it back to the fans. Is there anything you want to say to all of those who will be viewing? Just any parting words? Yeah. Well, if you're watching this, thank you for watching this. And if you've come to any of the shows, thank you for coming to the shows. If you bought any of the records, thank you for buying the records. And uh, without the fans, there is no show. There is no interrupters. And um, we promise to keep coming back if you guys do, too. 
Now it's my time to say thank you, because I want to say thank you so much for joining thank you. me. I really yeah. appreciate it. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And remember, to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogia.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See ya.